it's raining. Sometimes I wanted to catch it with the snow. Well, it does seem like it's just a mix of snow and rain, but yeah, it's not good enough to fly the drone and stuff like that. It's kind of funny, isn't it? Some snow and stuff, it seems okay with it. It's just, you have to factor in things like the temperature, but rain, nope. All right, when I read today, I think this one was kind of interesting with all the shutdowns and stuff like that. There have been less airplanes flying in the air. And if you think about it, it should make it safer for people who want to fly things like a drone if that is the concern usually that's going to hit an airplane because there's nothing else in the air. But how about this one? Apparently this one says, commercial pilots blame pandemic downtime for in-flight mistakes. The steepest downturn in modern aviation history means plenty of airline pilots are spending weeks or months of the coronavirus pandemic idling at home. When they do return to the cockpit, a few are admitting that they're out of practice and knocking off their rust is proving harder than anticipated. This was my first flight in nearly three months. One pilot wrote in a June report explaining why he or she neglected to turn on the critical anti-icing system. I placed too much confidence in assuming that it would all come back to me as second nature. The report on the flight which landed without incident is one of more than two dozen documenting the challenges of returning from pandemic related lead field in a federal system for tracking aviation mistakes. Is about well, three months enough time for people to I guess completely forget how to do something in this case? Like flying an airplane? Because it says here, everyone knows that flying skills and company policy procedures are highly diminishable. The pilot wrote in an anti-icing report. In order to prepare for a flight following a period of inactivity, I should have dedicated more time to review my duties. Airlines and the Federal Aviation Administration do have systems in place to require pilots to keep in practice. The pilot nearing three months without a flight was fast approaching a federal rule that requires additional training for pilots who aren't active enough over a 90 day period. The risk, aviation safety expert Peter Gull says, is that aviation disasters are often at the end of a chain that begins with a simple mistake. And the report goes on to say there were more incidents such as people landing the airplanes in zones where they didn't get air traffic approval. So yeah, I guess it's a big deal in many ways. Well, it's just kind of funny to think about in terms of safety and training. For example, like the drones, trying to separate them from airplanes to actual consumer drones, people flying here for fun. It makes you wonder how reliable and efficient the training system is in general. Like for Canada here, as you guys know, the RCMP crash a drone in the helicopter, it makes you wonder how good is that training to actually teach people how to fly. I said it once and I'll say it again, the whole process like here in Canada for example, that whole thing didn't once teach me about safety. If anything, as I mentioned, their process and everything like that actually makes flyers more dangerous because if you think about it, it potentially restricts people even more from actually getting outside and getting practice. And their idea of complex is just completely different. Like for example, I would say yesterday that capture I did, that is super complex. Just the fact that there was all this snow and stuff like that, and you have to watch it like a hawk in every single case, I would, that's what I would say is complex. Not for example, somebody taking off in their backyard, even if it's a quote, controlled airspace, and they're underneath the tree lines and all that. That should be a way to say, no, we encourage that, get some practice, because in situations like this, you need real practical experience, not just, I guess you could say, book smarts about clouds and stuff like that. And I read this, which was really interesting. When it comes to things like 3D printing, I guess we're all used to seeing things by now, people 3D printing items such as accessories. But how about actually 3D printing everything to make a fully functional drone fly, for example? This one says, fabricating fully functional drones. Casale's laser factory system automates the full process for making functional devices in one system. From Star Trek's replicators to Richie Rich's wishing machine, popular culture has a long history of parading flashy machines that can instantly output any item to a user's delight. While 3D printers have now made it possible to produce a range of objects that include product models, jewelry, and novelty toys, we still lack the ability to fabricate more complex devices that are essentially ready to go right out of the printer. A group from MIT's Computer Science and Artificial Intelligence Laboratory recently developed a new system to print functional, custom-made devices and robots without human intervention. Their single system uses a three-ingredient recipe that lets users create structural geometry, print traces, and assemble electronic components like sensors and actuators. And I guess with this example, they basically use drones as an example. It says here, let's say a user has aspirations to create their own drone. They first design the device by placing components on it from a parts library, and then draw on circuit traces. 
which are the copper or aluminum lines on a printed circuit board that allow electricity to flow between electronic components. They then finalize the drone geometry in the 2D editor. In this case, they use propellers and batteries on the canvas, wire them up to make electrical connections, and draw the perimeter to define the quadcopter's shape. And then afterwards, they go through all the process, and there you have it, a fully functional flying drone. I think obviously it doesn't look as polished as some commercial one you'd buy from the store, but that's kind of interesting that you can do all this automated. Perfect timing. The rain actually stopped. Alright, see you guys later.